25-pound catch weight fight. Mikey Garcia in the black, Sandor Martin in the white. Martin the southpaw with the red gloves, and Mikey Garcia does excellent against southpaws. He fell short with Errol Spence because that was a size and a little bit too big. But we saw what he did with Dejan Lechichinen and, of course, Juan Manuel Lopez. We've seen Mikey Garcia process data, figure the guy out before he really turns on the Jets. Chris, how fast of a start do you think Garcia gets off to? I don't think he gets off to a fast start at all. It's never really been Mikey Garcia's M.O. He was telling us this week he takes two or three rounds to kind of figure out what a guy is going to do. Doesn't watch a lot of tape on his opponents, uses these first few rounds to basically figure out how to fight and then proceed accordingly. What I'm curious to see is how he fights when Martin lunges in. When you watch him, when he gets a little bit comfortable, he starts to lunge in with that right hand and follow it up with lefts. That would seem to be a, a type of style that would leave him wide open to big counter shots from Mikey Garcia. Yeah, Garcia tells us that he studies and breaks down opponents. Every little thing, every moment that passes in the first and second round, he's studying the eyes, the body language, the movement, the breathing, how tight he's clinching. If he really wants to fight, these are all things that take about two, three rounds for him to finally unleash his offense. With direct TV stream, I can get live TV and on the. Sandra Martin entering this fight on a nine fight winning streak. Said he's going to take Mikey Garcia to school. And for whatever it's worth, Martin has been a little more active than Garcia. He fought once this year, probably his best win to date against Kay Prosper, picking up that win back in April. Yeah, and he rocked Prosper a few times. He's don't let the 13 KOs and 38 wins fool you. Martin has some power. Yeah, he has good pop. He has good pop in his punches. Uh, you know, he's not a power puncher, but it's enough to respect, you know, at the end of the punch, especially from that left-handed stance. But he is at his best, though, Sergio, when he's coming forward. For most of this round, it's been Mikey Garcia pressing the action a little bit. This is not where Sandor Martin wants to be, fighting backwards and counter punching. Mikey Garcia already getting him close to the ropes, and you see that Martin's actually a little bit weary. He doesn't want to be against the ropes. Keep the fight in the middle of the ring, but that's going to be very difficult to do against Garcia. And Martin is all over the place, reacting to every feint that Garcia gives him. Jittery, yeah, and that's the reason I say it's hard. It's going to be hard for him to keep the fight in the middle of the ring because he's going to have to fight Mikey Garcia. Is that nerve, Sergio? No, it's not nerves, because like you said, he's very confident. It's just kind of twitchy defense. Sander Martin started boxing at five years old, had almost 200 amateur fights, had over 100 kickboxing fights as well. So he's got plenty of experience. In fact, he's had more professional rounds than Mikey Garcia, 254 compared to 238. In the corner of Mikey Garcia, they want more, more feints. They want Martin to actually bite on the offense for it to counter with the, with the lefts and rights. Lights are going out. Time. I was looking around over to see here. if Fan Man was floating in. Sandor, over here. Over here. Over here. You okay? Todd, that was very WWE-esque right Time there. Well, I was waiting for The Undertaker maybe to come out from under the ring. Maybe some conspiracy theorists here in the crowd. Mikey Garcia already backing up. Martin. It's the one-two, basic one-two from, from Mikey Garcia. It's the best thing that he does. It's so long, but he hides his right hand behind that jab. He knocks a lot of uh, uh, world-class fighters with that right hand. One-two, simple. Chris mentioned Mikey Garcia's lack of activity. He's fought just seven times since January 2014. This is his first fight in 20 months. Yeah, a little bit different circumstances this time around. Ooh, nice shot there on the inside from Sander Martin. Caught Garcia coming in. Oh, that was Mikey coming in first. He landed that straight. I believe it was a right hand to the jaw. Good counter by Martin, but he got clipped in the jaw first. A lot of 
strength so far in these first two rounds. That's exactly what Mikey Garcia does. It's, it's not posturing. He's backing up. He's inching his feet closer and closer. He's getting closer with that jab. And there it is. There's that one-two that he throws. Martin stuck in the corner, tries to slide out to his right. A little less movement from, from Martin now. He wants to actually stand his ground, get some respect. This is Garcia's second left-handed opponent in his last three fights. Third in his last six. He's very comfortable and confident fighting southpaws. jabs from Martin so far because Mikey is lethal with those combinations. There's a good one, too. That's probably the, the best punch from Sando Martin. He's an excellent body puncher, but the one, two from the left-handed stance is what he's best at. And going downstairs is Martin. Sharp punching right there by Sando Martin. That's the one-up, <laughs> Stephanie Sergio. <laughs> In a negative manner. Trying course. to give people the information, Todd. <laughs> Well, Chris, my question to you is, if Sander Martin knows it takes Garcia a few rounds to get going, you'd think he'd want to jump all over him early, right? Well, he's certainly fighting a cautious fight at this point, but he's had some success, particularly in that first round. That jab, Sergio, not so much a scoring punch that Martin's throwing out, but kind of a range finder that he can throw that, that uh, left hand behind him. Yeah, I think Martin's uh, wanting to counter the counter puncher. That's exactly what Mikey Garcia's great at. He's really... He's really lethal with those with those uh, counter punching, but right now Martin's trying to counter the counter puncher. See, Mikey's gonna keep pressuring, pressuring and dissecting the opponent in front of him. He'll find a way in. Eight of Martin's 40 career fights have come in Spain. All of them have been in Europe. He's fought in Sweden and Italy, and now, of course, for the first time ever in the United States. And we talked about this. Soto Gonzalez fight, but if this is the style that Martin's going to fight for the duration, um, it's going to have to be in great shape. I mean, it's tough to stay on your back foot and move as much as he's trying to move. Well, he I, did a nice job sticking and moving there. I think, other than keeping his chin down, he's doing a good job when his back gets against the ropes. I mean, he landed a good right hook combination. His punches are crisp, they're, they're, they're fast, and right now, Mikey Garcia has to respect what's coming back from, from Martin. September of 2017, nine straight wins. That was a firefight with uh, Anthony Yijin. I, I really enjoyed watching that fight. He showed that uh, Martin Kenny nice shot on the inside from Garcia as he starts to let his hands go. But Martin caught him coming in again. That was a good right hook by Sando Martin. Caught Mikey coming in right there nicely. And this is what we're talking about, Chris. My Sando Martin's not a power puncher, but he is a crisp puncher. You gotta respect his pop. You can hear the sound of those when they're landing on Garcia's body. Set for round four here in Fresno, California, scheduled for 10. A non title fight, a rare non title fight for Mikey Garcia. They want more feints from Garcia and to stop aiming at the head, aim at the chest. Of Martin because Martin does have some some good upper body movement right now, but the chest is not going to go anywhere. Let's take a look at Chris Mannix's scorecard through three rounds. Yeah, I've got a two rounds to one in favor of Sandor Martin. I thought he's done. He has done some pretty good work on Mikey Garcia, able to move away from Mikey's pressure, and when he does, land some big shots. We'll see if he can do it. 
for six more rounds. But right now, I've got Sandra Martin, Martin in the lead. I would like, I, I agree with Chris right there, 2 1. But uh, I want to see how Martin's going to act once Ooh. Mikey starts throwing combinations, not just one and twos. Once the combination starts flowing and he breaks the distance, how's Martin going to react? This crowd still waiting to get energized behind a big Mikey Garcia punch. And you got to remember, Sando Martin's a natural bigger fighter here, so he might be able to take a little bit more from what Garcia normally hurts his opponents with. Jessica McCaskill is with us. What have you made of Sander Martin so far? I feel like Martin has eliminated Mikey's jab. We know that Mikey needs to throw that jab first in order to set up those good combinations. And we talk about a righty and a lefty fighting, and they have that front foot battle. These guys are having the front hand battle, that those jab hands are parrying each other, and they're not actually getting over to a score. Great analysis. Perfect analysis, absolutely. Sergio, do you get the sense that Garcia is still trying to figure him out, or he's figured him out, he just hasn't been able to stop him yet? No, I, I think uh, he, I think it's the latter, Todd. I think he has to respect what Sando Martin is doing right now. You know, like I said, he, he's naturally the bigger fighter, but Martin's throwing the, the right counter combination, the check right hook, staying away from the ropes, keeping the fight in the middle of the ring, and those jittery uh, feints that he's throwing in the jab. Garcia with a 75% knockout ratio, 30 KOs in his 40 wins. Sander Martin with 13 KOs in his 38 victories. Nice move off the rope by Sando Martin right there. Not staying on the ropes long enough for Mikey Garcia to get any kind of confidence of landing anything. You know, as you start thinking about the scorecards here, it's only a 10 round fight. Mikey Garcia can't wait too long to get aggressive on Sando Martin. <laughs> No, but he normally does that. Yeah. Either way, this crowd was expecting more excitement, at least from Mikey Garcia. And Martinez made this a very difficult strategic fight. He told us that he had a special ability to predict things in the ring, that he knew what Garcia was going to do, and he would be three or four steps ahead of his opponent. Martino has a good rhythm. You know, he has a good rhythm of, of, of coming out with a jab. See all that? Those punches are, are, are missing by Garcia. He's not loading up on anything, but they're missing. But then Martin comes back with a nice jab, just like that right there. When the fighter's coming forward, those little jabs just, they annoy you. And you know that they're, they're just pestering. Blood trickling on the top of the nose of Mikey Garcia right now. As Martina Gibbs escapes danger in the corner. Martin has managed to take this crowd completely out of the fight. <laughs> Haven't heard a big roar yet, and we're in round five. These rounds are going fast, and you know, Mikey Garcia, like, like we like to say, he, he likes to take his time to figure out his opponent, but right now we're halfway through in a 10-round yeah. fight. Good left hand for Mikey Garcia there. And it's set up by a, a left hand to the body that caught Martin pulling out which is what I noticed when I was watching Martin. He pulls out with his head up in the air. And that's part of his kickboxing background. It's very difficult to make that transition from kickboxing to boxing, or MMA to boxing for that matter, especially when it comes to footwork, as Garcia's trying to rough Martin up in the corner. And he caught his attention early in this exchange with two right hands. Now he's got him exactly where he wants him to be. Putting all his weight now on Martin. See, this is exactly what, what we needed to see from uh, 
Soto in the last fight. When you can't, you can't pin down your opponent, a southpaw opponent, you just got to hit, hit him at the body, trap him and get the opportunity and bang away at the shoulders and the biceps, which is what Mikey Garcia is doing now. Yeah, that's a, that's a mental uh, exhaustion there because you know that it, it takes so much mentally to, to keep Mike, Mikey Garcia off you like that. He's doing a good job five rounds in, but he still have halfway more to go. So that's, that's probably what we're seeing right there. It's a mental fatigue. Well, is Martin taking Garcia to school as he promised us he would do? He's surprising me, so maybe not to school, but he's holding his own and he's definitely in this fight. Oh, nice that? flurry there from Martin. It takes confidence. He countered the counterpuncher right there, so he knew exactly. He, he was ready to pounce on Mikey Garcia right there. That shows that he is confident. A rare time that you saw Garcia off balance and out of position. Stop. And Martin made him pay. Wait. A really good round by Sandro Martin. Box. Yeah, you never know what the judges are thinking, Chris, but quietly, Martin could be racking up some rounds here. Well, he has been, to my eyes, the accurate puncher for most of the rounds in this fight. He's done it largely off counter punching, but he's been able to land, move off, and avoid shots like that, making Mikey Garcia miss. And that's Mikey Garcia, probably his best punch. It's a simple one, too, but he lunges in. Blocking the right hand. Straight left jab, straight down the pipe with the right hand, but he's missing with the southpaw here. Credit Sandro Martin for being more disciplined than I expected him to be. Watching his previous fights, he had been reckless. There he lands a nice left hand, but he'd been kind of just aggressively reckless at times, chasing opponents down. I figured if he did that, Mikey would take advantage of it. He hasn't done that up until this point. I didn't expect him to be this sharp and this confident. I mean, we saw the confidence, but, you know, ignorance is bliss sometimes. But this man, he's proving that everything he said, he's, he's doing it now. Because he has a four-division world champion stalking him, and he's, he's doing everything to keep him off. Chris, you said you didn't expect to see any ring rust from Garcia. How would you describe his performance from it so far? It's hard to tell if there's any ring rust or if it's just Sandro Martin fighting a very good fight. But Mikey Garcia has not, clearly not looked as good as we've seen him look in many of his previous I think it's the latter, Chris. I think I'm impressed with Sandro Martin and, and how he's following his game plan, getting his respect, check, check hooking, like right there. He, he barely missed with that check right hook, but Mikey Garcia, he's leery of that. He's throwing the right shots, Martinez, and he's throwing him some good pop. There's a right hook again. Good work out of the corner and off the ropes for Sandor Martin, who may have won another round. He fought this past April, but he was active in December of 20, uh, 2020. So he's had two fights in the time that Mikey Garcia has had none. Let's take a look at Chris Mannix's scorecard for six rounds. Look, I think Sandor Martin is doing some excellent work in this fight. He is landing the cleaner punches. He is counter-punching beautifully, and he has been able to avoid those big shots from Mikey Garcia. So I give Sandor Martin an edge in this fight. Let's check in now with Jessica McCaskill, and how concerned are you with Mikey Garcia? I feel like he's looking for a KO, and he just needs to focus on winning rounds right now. Martin is moving and giving him angles and taking a lot of sting off of those punches. He, Mikey needs to go to the body to slow him down. You know, I was thinking a lot of times the crowd's reaction can sway the judges when they're ooing and eyeing with every landed punch. But when you got 8,000 people this quiet, maybe the judges are thinking, wow, Garcia's not doing anything. Yeah, anytime, anytime you have a crowd that, that supports the fighter so much and it's quiet, you're doing your job. You know, that's my trainer used to tell me all the time. You want it to be quiet in here. The more quiet it is, you know you're winning this fight. Work out of that, work out of that, fellas. Martin doing a good job not getting hit by that, that one two that we know that Mikey Garcia is so great at doing. He lunges in with a straight left hand just to come back with a straight right hand and he knocks a, a lot of world class fighters down with that punch. Martin's getting away with it. 
I do agree that Mikey is doing a little bit too much headhunting here. He's become somewhat predictable in that these, yeah, there he goes to the body there, but most of his shots have been above the neck. Round seven scheduled for 10. This fight has moved relatively fast, like you were saying, Sergio. And look at the slickness from Martin. I'm impressed, guys. I'm telling you. To have a, a, a fighter like Mike, Mikey Garcia, four-division world champion, a guy that's been in there with some of the best fighters oh, in the world. Oh, and a nice straight left hand from... And we've got to ask this question now, Chris. Earlier I said, what's next for Mikey Garcia if he wins this fight? What's next for him if he loses this fight? Probably a rematch. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I mean, I mean, this would be a disaster, would it not? A, a, a monumental disaster. No one gave Martin a chance, but this crowd is eerily silent. Garcia hasn't landed a major punch in a while. As Martin just dances around, and sticks and moves. And this is the beauty of self-belief and confidence. I mean, this Sando Martin was brimming with confidence and told us that he was going to school Mikey Garcia. He may not be seemingly is ahead of Mikey Garcia with only three rounds to go. Well, you're not going to win an exciting fight with Mikey Garcia, so this is exactly what Sando Martin wanted to do, and that's exactly what he said he was going to do. I mean, I'm really shocked and impressed right now with Martin more than I am disappointed in what Mikey Garcia hasn't been able to do. Let's look at Chris Mannix's scorecard on the screen, and he does indeed have the Spaniard, Martin, up 68 to 65. Chris, earlier I said, how big of an upset would this be? And you talked about it being monumental. It would be one of the biggest upsets I can recall. Sandra Martin came in here as a complete unknown, only a domestic fighter, no significant win on his resume, no significant fight on his resume. Whereas in Mikey Garcia, you've had a guy that's frequently had a spot on pound for pound list. So this would be as big an upset as it gets. I mean, I don't recall Martin, Martin rather being buzzed at all, really being rocked with a shot. And he's pot shotting right now. He's, he's letting some good shots on Mikey Garcia. Garcia's a little leery just coming in now. He's respecting the, the pop of uh, Martin. Just like that. And that immediately sent Garcia down, or maybe they tripped okay. feet, but Garcia stumbled backwards. He stumbled, but he also got a punch landed on him. Yeah. Let's bring back in Jessica McCaskill. Jessica, give some tips to Mikey Garcia. How does he get back into this fight? Martin is, is executing a perfect plan here. He's keeping his distance. He keep, he's keeping his space. And then when he's in close, he's not letting Mikey punch to the body. He's holding until the referee says stop. He breaks him up, and then he gets his space right back. Mikey's got to knock him out now in order to get this fight because he's behind on the scorecards. At least a knockdown, but yeah, I totally agree with Jessica because that's exactly what a boxer does. You know, you don't let the aggressor get off on punches. Anytime Mikey Garcia tries to get something going, Martin clinches. How confident are you in the judges here tonight, Chris? Not at all, Todd. <laughs> all right. Well, we already had one rather peculiar scorecard this evening when one judge scored it 116, 112 for Elvin Soto in that fight two fights ago. Never surprises me when there are bizarre scorecards anymore. But they got it right, that's the important part. Two did. Well, Mikey Garcia has not gotten this fight right at all. He is perplexed at Sandro Martin, as we all are. No one, and I mean no one expected him to do this. A big left hand for the Spaniard scores again. Amazing high level southpaws over the course of his career. He just doesn't look like he knows what to do Be with careful. that punch. And this is what happens when you fight down to to opponents that you're not a unknown opponent. When you're used to fighting at, in Arlington with 50,000 people, and then you come to Fresno and fight a nobody that no one's heard of, you know, you fight down to your opponents. This is supposed to be a celebration. I mentioned earlier they're shooting off fireworks as he made his way to the ring, like the fight was already won. Instead, Mikey Garcia may be on the receiving end of one of the biggest upsets in recent memory here in boxing. Look at the CompuBox numbers. Punches in round eight. Only three landed punches for Mikey Garcia. And 
You talk about him not being able to figure out uh, Martin. Mikey Garcia, 41 pro fights. He's been in the uh, Robert Easter Jr., Sergey Lipinitz, Juan Manuel Lopez, Orlando Salido, Jesse Vargas, Adrian Broner. Why can't he figure this guy out? Well, Martin is a, the real deal, and he's following the game plan like he told us. I mean, he said, I'm going to school Mikey Garcia, and right now it looks like he is doing the screwing because he's fighting like a southpaw, clinching when he needs to clinch, getting away from the ropes like he did right there, and getting the clean shots on Mikey Garcia. Hey. Martin was a 10 to 1 underdog, and now finally Garcia scores with the right hand, and Martin says, I'll stand and trade with you for a minute. He doesn't want to do that, though, does he, Sergio? No, this actually, I, li I like the fact that he's doing that. Just don't get too much because you got the respect of Mikey Garcia boxing, and you got to get the respect of him fighting. But then get back on the bike, just like that. Cracked him again. This was not in the script. Better round, though, for Mikey Garcia. He's won a couple of exchanges where Martin has been sort of stationary in the corner like he is right here. That's where Mikey wants to be. Martin, to this point, has been very adept at spinning out of it after landing a shot. Notice how Mikey Garcia, is, he's actually a little leery to jump in with that famous one-two that he throws because he, he's leery of the right chest hook of Martin that he's been throwing. You said if he loses, you might see a rematch. What would be different if they fought again? Hard to say. I mean, you can look at Mikey Garcia and say there's ring rust going on here. Lands a punch there. Maybe he didn't take Martin all that seriously. Lots can change if it goes Sandor Martin's way. Yeah, let's not put the cart before the horse, as they say. Although Garcia did have a pretty solid round nine. Let's see what happens here. Good straight left hand from Sandra Martin. Once again, just coming right up the middle on Mikey Garcia and landing that punch. Here's Chris Mannix's scorecard through nine full rounds. It was a good last ninth round for Mikey Garcia. I gave that round to him, but I've got an 87 84. He needs a knockdown or a knockout on my scorecard to win this. You see Martin throw a check right hook right there, which is what Mikey Garcia, that's the reason he just can't walk in because the right hook keeps slinging by the face of Mikey Garcia. Let's check back in with Jessica. What do you make of Mikey Garcia's game plan? I'm surprised it hasn't changed. He came in a lot harder in those first couple of rounds, and now it seems like he's faded and he can't really get a hold of Martin. Martin's moving a lot. Very smart move by Mikey, though. Right before the round started, he got some cheers from the fans. He's waving them on, maybe to convince the judges that he is winning this fight. He's trying to convince himself. And there's the two counters right there by Martin, and then he clinches. Just smart boxing on his part. What would a loss here tonight do to Mikey Garcia's legacy? I don't know if it has an effect on his legacy. It it would put him really? in a position to need, he'd need a to nobody look. from Spain that we had to look up on Wikipedia to find out who he was. Coming off a 20 month layoff, not that it gives him a pass at all, but if there is a rematch, and again, I have no idea what these judges are going to see in this fight, but if he has a chance to avenge it and does, you kind of move past it. But right now, not a good look for Mikey Garcia. A great look for Sando Martin, I'm telling you right now. Oh, this is life changing, round. life changing. If this goes his way, life changing for Sandro Martin. He puts himself, he's already put himself on the world level, guys. Like, he belongs on this stage. And now meets Mikey Garcia. Look, a little banter there from, from Martin. Telling Mikey Garcia, you're not hurting me. 30 seconds to go. No real desperation, Sergio, at all these last couple there of rounds. There is not, and it seems like Sandro Martin caught. wants to close the show. Him back with that right hook, Martin. What a night for Sandor Martin.
has he just beaten Mikey Garcia? Viva España! I think he just might have pulled it off, guys. Caiz both scored them out 97 to 93 for your winner by majority decision. El Orgullo de Barcelona, Catalonia, España, Sandor He did it! Do you believe this? Sandor Martin!